Hey guys, so I wanted to show you how to engrave pencils with your Glowforge Aura. We're going to start by making the jig, and I'm going to assume that you already have a copy of the file and you've um, extracted your zip file. So when you either get it from my email or you grab it um, from the resource library, if you're already on my email list, then you're going to have downloaded a zip file. You'll need to extract that because you're going to need the SVG file for me. So don't try to upload the zip file. That won't work. Um, once you have the zip file, you're going to go to the Glowforge app. You're going to click on create new design and create a blank design. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, just to make everything super simple and easy, I am going to be using a proof grade material. Um, just so we don't have to tinker with any of those settings, but you do not need to use proof grade. You can use any material so long as your cut settings and engraved settings are right. And all right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to click up here to import artwork and then upload. And from there, you are going to need a copy of my SVG. All right, so in your extracted zip file, you're going to see the engraved pencil JPEG. That's just a reminder of what your engraved setting should be if you're using the same pencils I have, but it's probably a good start for pencils. Uh, file rights and terms, obviously just says, hey, please don't share this with anybody. You can share my blog, you can share my Facebook group, point them to how they can get it themselves, but please don't share the actual file. And then, of course, the pencil SVG. So that's the one we're going to select. And it's just going to take a second to upload it. Um, Glowforge just kind of processes all images. And here's what we've got. Now, do not expand or make smaller. You know, don't make any changes to the size of this. Um, unless, you know, your pencils are drastically different than mine for some reason. Because then it just won't, right? The um, height of each of these little rectangles is intentional. Um, so I'm going to just drag this all the way to the side and try to not waste any of my preparation material. Um, so I like to just, you know, go as close to the edges and corners and stuff as I can. All right. Now you'll see because I am using proof grade, it recognizes the material. And now all we need to do is we need to tell it what to do with each of these pieces. Um, so... This one right here is basically those little rectangles. We don't want that to engrave, we want that to cut out. So you're going to click on engrave and switch to cut. Then over here, um, this right here is your X. So we're just going to leave that as engrave. That's good. If for some reason you want to speed this up a little bit, um, you could just delete this piece if you wanted. Um, you could over here to ignore and that means that it won't cut it or you could switch to score i'm going to leave it on engraved and then this last piece right here is just that overall box so let's get rid of that the overall box to cut out or uh our jig from proof grade material we don't want that to engrave can you imagine how long that would take to engrave that whole box there we don't want that we want that to cut um and so we're going to go right here to cut so now you see what we've got here. We've got, sorry, my video cut out on me. Um, the pencil jig text over here and it's text down here at the bottom is going to engrave. And then these rectangles are going to cut. Now it did do these in an order that I don't think would be ideal. Um, ideally we'd want it to engrave first, then cut these little pieces out and then cut the overall. That'll just make sure that you don't end up with any moving around. So what I just did, I probably should have like, put it back, is you can actually, if you haven't done this before, on this left-hand side here, you can reorder um, how the Glowforge is going to do things. So right here, we're going to grab um, the text part and drag it up. And what that says is it's now going to engrave, and then it's going to do these little rectangles, and then it's going to do the overall cut. And that'll just give us the best results to make sure we don't end up with any issues. So from here, we are ready to print. So we're just going to print on the side. 
And then it's going to go through its normal steps. So it's going to tell us how long this is going to take. And then once the blue light circle light starts flashing, you just press that and it'll start spitting. I'm going to stop here and I will start the video back up once the jig is ready and I'm ready to show you how to use it. All right, now that the machine is done cutting, we're ready to pull out our jig. All right, now there's our pencil jig. All we need to do now is take our masking out, clean up, <laughs> clean up the glue forge, and then we're gonna put this right back in with some pencils. All right, now I actually recommend keeping a few of these because if you ever need to take out your crumb tray and put something else in it, these are great thin little things that you could put in there just to lift it back up if you need to. Um, now we've got our beautiful jig and then we're just going to place that in and you want to try to make this about as straight as possible. And then we're going to put our pencils. I like to just get them all in first. Um, and then once they're in, I will make sure. So these are a little um, hexagonal, I think. So you want to try to make sure that one of the flat edges is facing all the way up so that you try to get as much as you can on one edge. Now this is what it looks like when it's done. Um, you can be super picky and make sure that you've got the same side on all of them if you want. Um, I'm just trying to do this quickly so I can show you guys how it works. Um, and then you do want to make sure that you line them all up on one side. I think the eraser is easiest. So I think we are good here. And now you can use this area here just to kind of make sure that you're pretty even. And it looks pretty even to me. So just kind of use these little markings. I know I need to clean it again. Um, but yeah, just use that to try to make sure that this is about as straight as possible. Now we're going to go back to the app and I'll show you how to get the text done. Now it's time to add in the height for our pencil. So we're just going to click on the materials, on the materials, click at the top for setting the, um, the height. And then we're going to put in 0.26. Now it's time to actually put our text onto pencils. And there's two ways you can do that. One of them is by actually using the original SVG. If you are very familiar with Inkscape, you can pull that open and pull the SVG open in Inkscape or even Adobe Illustrator, whatever works for you. And you're going to notice that there are already text fields in there. Those don't import into the Glowed Forge app because they're still marked as text, so you could update them. But if you choose to update the file this way, then you can just change the text placeholder text in here and then switch those to paths and then resave that, upload it, and then pull the text from there. They're going to be spaced and everything for you already. That's a little more complicated and I think most of us are probably going to do it in the Glowforge app. So today I'm going to show you how to do it in the Glowforge app instead. Now to do this, we're going to add a text box and then we're going to basically want to size it so that it fits on the right place. And then we'll set the settings for it and all that. So let's get started with that. You click on the T and then we're going to add the text. Now you really can use any font that you like. You don't have to use the same font that I'm using, but so far I've had really good success with the one I've been using. So I'm just going to stick with that for today. Um, I'm going to use 10 point font for this again, because that seems to work out really well for my pencils. Um, so if you're using the same font, then go with that font size. Anything bigger than that is just going to get a little bit too large for the pencil. Anything smaller is going to be hard to read. But if you're using another font, you may just need to tinker with it a little bit to figure out what works best for you. Now you saw that I just zoomed in a little bit. You can do that by clicking control and then plus. And then I clicked on the hand in order to help move the bed so that I could really focus in on the pencils. And I find that this is really important so that I can really see where I'm putting my pencils. 
sorry, where I'm putting the text. Um, it's just too hard for me to tell without really zooming in this close. So now I'm just aligning it to where I want and then I'm going to click copy and then paste. Now you want to make sure when you're doing this that you're not doing paste as new step because if you do that, you're going to have to put in the setting for each one individually and I didn't want to have to do that. Now if you change the text, so let's say you do different texts, then even if you do just straight copy and paste, it's going to require its own setting because it's going to recognize that as a separate step. But when you're just copying the same thing over and over again, it's going to lump them all together. And so you only have to add the setting in once, which is really convenient. So I'm just going to copy and paste a whole bunch of these and line them up. But as you can see, I'm just doing my best to get each one in the center. Now that I've pasted a whole bunch of them, I'm just dragging them all into place. And once I have them all in place, I'm actually going to left justify them and I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right, now I have just kind of hand manually drag them to where I think they should be at this point. And I'm going to just click somewhere and drag so that I can select all of the text and left justify. So if you see on the left hand side here, that's that button. And then um, we're going to click on, whoops, that's the wrong one. We're going to click on left justify. And that way they're all going to be in the same place on the pencil, which is just kind of nice. And let's zoom in a little bit. I'd like to do this at the end and you're going to see some of them need just a little bit of tweaking. This is just kind of a nice double check. So what I do at this point, because they're all left justified already, is I'm going to click on one and then usually I'll just use the down and up arrows to move them into the right spot. All right, now it's time to add our settings for the pencils and you can see the settings that I'm putting in here. Um, once these are in, I'm actually going to save this as the engraved pencil settings. So you just have to add it in once and then you can select it again. So you saw I just clicked on the plus sign, adding in the name, and there we go. And that's it. Now we're ready to print. So just do a quick double check, make sure everything looks good and click on print. And it's going to go through its usual steps and just make sure that everything's good. I'm going to just fast forward here for us. And you can see it's actually only going to take a little under seven minutes to do all 10 of them, which is great because I think it took me about a minute each when I did four. So this is a little faster. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just remembering wrong, but this is pretty good to do 10 pencils. All right, now let's see how they turned out. So I would say that they're all good except for that last one. So if I were to do another round of these, one, I'd be really, really careful um, not to move the jig so I can keep the text boxes where they are. Um, with the exception of the bottom one, I might move up a little bit. Or the other option, if you have them, I don't have any yet, is they sell clamp things or you can even cut your own. Um, that'll hold your jig in place, which will make doing that even easier. Another option would be if you're struggling with that last one, and that's, I think, just part of like the fish eye lens, is maybe just don't put a pencil in that last one. But overall, they came out great. So that's the process. Now you know how to do it. Let me know if you have any questions.